Hello, Melinda. Well, Hi hello there. there. All right, so we saw a movie. We saw a movie. We saw a movie. Back to Team Death Goes to the Movies. And uh, we saw... Chop, Chop and Steel. Steel. So, Chop and Steel. Uh, if you are familiar with the Found Footage Festival or VCR Party Live, you know all about it. But if you're not, I'd like to tell you just briefly, the Found Footage Festival is super important to us. It was our second date and it kind of set the tone for our relationship the entire time. Now, not a Tuesday goes by that we don't tune in to VCR Party Live on the Found Footage Festival YouTube channel, links somewhere on the screen. I'm a huge fan. I was a fan for a long time. and I'm a new fan. Yeah, to convert her into a Melinda has Show been, me your raviolis. <laughs> has been a real treat. So Nick Frewer and Joe Pickett are the men behind the Found Footage Festival. And in addition to doing a touring show when they're able to, uh, showing weird VCR clips and the like, they also are pranksters. And one thing that they like to do is take advantage of the fact that morning news programs don't always run background checks on their press releases and the people they invite to come onto their show to promote certain events. Now, they've done things like Chef Keith's Turbo Gravy and his special or his new cookbook uh, they've had uh, a yo-yo master on there Kenny Strauss the yo-yo master who had no idea how to use a yo-yo yeah I mean he knew how to put it on his finger and mm -hmm. swing it around but that was about it but the big thing they did was something called chop and steel where they played a strongman duo where they did various feats of strength including picking each other up uh, smashing wicker baskets lifting regular household objects that sort of thing. And they did this for a number of morning shows, pretending to have uh, like a strongman demonstration lined up, that sort of thing. And the hosts invariably acted all excited to meet them and mm -hmm. excited to see their different feats of strength and, and gave no indication in any way that they had any realization that this was clearly an act of comedy. Um, I, you might have noticed my get up at the beginning. It's an homage to the greatness that right. Nick and Joe created with Chop and Steel because these hilarious outfits, uh, hilarious, you know, stunts, or stunts, if you will, uh, as feats of strength. Very clear that these guys yeah. were not a real strongman duo. It's a huge put on, and in some of the video from the deposition uh, that is featured in this documentary, they flat out have to tell lawyers, no, we are not strong men. Deposition? I mean, why Why on earth would there be a deposition after just a funny prank like this? Homeboys got sued. Yeah. So they got sued by a news station because they didn't think it was nearly as funny as, well, everybody else did. And this documentary, Chop and Steel, ostensibly is about the lawsuit and how they survived the lawsuit, what they did to get through it. But there's and so much... Change their lives. Oh, change your lives. Yeah. And there's how much uh, it impacted those around them. Mm -hmm. We get to see Joe's wife. We see Joe's parents and Nick's parents. We don't see anybody else from the VCR Party Live crew, but, you know, we see how it affected them. And it's really more than that, though, because not only is it a story about what they did to deal with a lawsuit, but it really kind of examined their lives as pranksters their friendship that goes all the way back to grade school, uh, the things that they would do growing up, the things that they did to get in trouble uh, together, the funny things they do to this day when they're doing something as simple as renewing their driver's license. It also, I thought, had a really nice um, subplot showing how their lives changed during the pandemic and, yes. and their, you know, change in their living circumstances what it was like being isolated because in both cases they were pretty much al alone at home uh, mm -hmm. sometimes with a pet but but not necessarily and and without really any other loved ones and only able to communicate with each other like most of us were via right. zoom or or you know other skype call or something of the sort 
and, and so it, it was a neat um, thing to look back on now that we're you know coming out of the worst of the pandemic and, and things are freeing up and even say doctors offices aren't requiring medical masks at this point in time it's neat to look back and and see okay how did other people's experience differ from mine or yours and and how did that change their life going through that that time period now the a plot is the lawsuit and kind of this bizarre extension of the whole Chop and Steel Act. We're not going to spoil it. No. But they did get asked to be on America's Got Talent. And there's a prank. It's 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 wonderful. I didn't see it coming at all. No. Um, I, I don't knew, think the judges did either. No. And, and, and I knew there was something big because they talked about it on their VCR Party Live show that there was something with America's Got Talent and yeah, they did prank them, but they didn't want to say what it was. And we're not going to say what it was either. I will say it's one of the greatest feats of personal will that I have ever <laughs> witnessed and definitely not something I think I could accomplish. No, I, I don't think I could have pulled it off either. No. But there are several different uh, B stories kind of going throughout the whole thing, how they dealt with the pandemic. I do feel like, and, and I'm going to be a little critical here, I loved the documentary. And I enjoyed the heck out of it. And I'll probably watch it again at some point. But I do feel like it, it, there was an attempt to maybe overemphasize or, or manu maybe even manufacture, I don't know. I think that's a strong word. Drama between Joe and Nick and the fact that they were kind of maybe growing apart a little bit. Joe's wife works in L.A. They do their thing in New York. That sort of thing. And this almost... Are they still going to get along? Are they still really friends? Or they just do this because that's all they know kind of thing. And I, I found that to be a little uh, extraneous. And I think I'll agree with you on that. And to be fair to Joe and Nick, they're the subjects of the documentary, but they did not make the documentary. True. True. This documentary had been in the works for several years during the lawsuit, through the pandemic, through the shutdowns, through all of it. Uh, the launch of VCR Party Live happened during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. That's not really touched on too much, but to me, that's a big part of the mythology of Joe and Nick because that's how I found them. So well, because I as, wanted more of that. As they say, they were doing their live shows to pay their legal fees, basically, right. and, and pay to and be able to afford to, just to live. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic pretty much shut that down, so they had to shift uh, gears and change direction and I think it's turned into something really kind of amazing for them yeah um, it was really neat to go back to the Hollywood in order to see this yes now it's uh, if it's not out now it's going to be out soon it's out if now it's stream yeah you can stream it now on various channels and outlets I believe it's on Amazon Prime and Apple TV and a few others I'll do some research and put that in in post just to let everybody know where they can see it streaming we were really disappointed because when it first hit the theatrical circuit it was an Alamo Draft House exclusive, but then when we found out it was going to be playing at the Hollywood Theater in Portland, we are like, we're all in, we're going. Well, and our second date being yeah. the Found Footage Festival at the Hollywood. Although, I, it was really fun because instead of being in the downstairs giant auditorium, which is more like a traditional movie theater in the field, we got to head up the weird ramp, not stairs, ramp, to one of the upstairs smaller theaters. Uh, which I really enjoyed, a different seating experience that was you really nice. You liked the nice. ramp? I liked the, well, the ramp was a little challenging for me, but that's okay. I felt like I was doing my own strongman act just to get up the ramp, but uh, I do appreciate that in some cases it would be easier than having stairs for sure. moving things around. And so the Lovecraft Film Festival is at the Hollywood Theater, and we've jokingly referred to that ramp as a perfect example of Lovecraftian non-Euclidean geometry, <laughs> because it is weird the and way it kind of goes up um but yeah we went up that ramp we saw it in one of the smaller houses had some pizza uh, really nice long thin tables so you can have something to set your food on uh but still a great view and nice spacing between levels for all the seating so you weren't having to like look at anyone's head you were well above any of that and i that's me saying that at five foot three I know that's probably not usually an issue for you seeing over people's heads, but sometimes an issue for me, so I really appreciated that. And a great choice of pizza was amazing. Mm -hmm. Nice uh, popcorn, really nice, good, real butter popcorn. Oh, real melted butter. Come on, can you get anything better than that? 
and just the neat ambiance, the, the whole setup there, the Hollywood with the curtaining and, and the way the screens are draped and surrounded and uh, the way the staff is dressed and, and oh, yeah, the Hollywood's great. is wonderful. It's one of my favorite theaters in the area. Now, the only thing that would have made the whole thing better for me is if Joe and Nick were there to present the film. That's true. Joe, Nick. Please come back to the Hollywood Theater. Come to Portland. Please. I need to see you again. I, 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 you're important to our marriage, our yes, courtship. You, you, you brought us I, together at please. an important time. I mean, if I hadn't seen that bunion surgery, I, I just don't know if we'd be married today. You know, they showed the clips from the nudist colony stuff, and I thought, you know, how am I going to compete with the 10 foot anatomy we're seeing on the screen? You know, but still, everything worked out okay. So please come back. Come and see us. Anyway, go see Chop and Steal or, or track it down streaming. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a feature length documentary. I don't know if it's available as like a Blu ray or a DVD, but if it is, I wouldn't mind picking it up because I'm sure there's some deleted scenes and such. Like, for example, uh, George and Steve from VCR Party Live do not appear in the fi finished documentary, but I do know they shot some stuff that just didn't make the final so hopefully cut. Hopefully, some bonus footage. I would love to see that. Fingers and tentacles crossed. Right. You know, and I just, I'm a fan of what they do. I, I really am. I love the Found Footage Festival, and VCR Party Live is one of my favorite YouTube shows, period. But anyway, uh, Chop and Steal, highly recommended. If you do go to a Found Footage Festival event, or go to a screening of Chop and Steal, or happen to know where Joe or Nick lives, tell them that we said hi, uh, beg them to come back to the Hollywood, and then go see Chop and Steal and let them know that Team Death sent you. Good? Good. Got a workout routine plan to get out of this whole thing. I mean, I got my wicker basket to smash. If we All want right. To do that. Let's do it. 